Hi there, and welcome to My Week. So glad that you could join us. I'm Christy McDonald. We have a lot to get to on the show. So coming up for you, the Iraqi nationals detained during an immigration sweep will remain in this country a little while longer. We'll talk about the latest ruling and hear from one of the detainees. Plus, a look at the top candidates in the 2018 Michigan governor's race and the major fundraising that is already taking place. Also coming up, Michigan may not have won the big Foxconn investment, but incentives might help for a secondary plant. And the movie Detroit has people talking. How will it impact Detroit's reputation and the conversation about race relations? Let's bring in our My Week contributors, Nolan Finley of the Detroit News. You know him, and Stephen Henderson of the Detroit Free Press. Guys, it's great to see you. We have a lot going on today. There's a lot percolating also in Washington with the health care debate coming up in the most bizarre. Um, I think I feel like I've had to reread some of the uh, uh, some of the rules and regulations of the Senate and the entire process here. Yeah. You guys are speechless, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah. Whenever you want to get they to it. Get, they cannot get their act together over this stuff. I know. It's, it's, it's kind of interesting. All right. Well, we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff tonight, but we are going to start with the latest on the impending deportation of hundreds of Iraqi immigrants in Metro Detroit and across the country. All have criminal records and were detained by U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement back in June. But this week, a federal judge in Detroit temporarily blocked the deportation, giving the Iraqis 90 days to find lawyers to help them possibly stay in this country. Many of the Iraqis are Christian and would face persecution in Iraq. Tonight in a special One Detroit report, we hear from Yanni Daoud, who is being detained in Youngstown, Ohio, and a visit with his family in Warren. Take a look. This call is from a correction facility and is subject to monitoring and recording. So how are you doing today? Yeah, it's up and down today. I feel good. But, you know, it's a roller coaster. You know, it's an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're basically on death row. You know, that's how we all feel. I feel like he's been kidnapped. You know, um, I just want him to come home. Did you hear anything else today? Uh, no, not really. Not really. Yeah. My husband was driving home from the gas station and was pulled over by ICE and arrested. Um, they said he, his supervision was revoked. I can't wait till you come home. Yeah, me too. I can't wait. It's been long enough. 45 days. He's in Youngstown, Ohio. Four hour drive. So we can't see him, you know, once every couple weeks. Not knowing is the worst part. The not knowing. It's just, I see, I'm seeing grown men stronger than me just deteriorating. You know, sobbing like little babies. I just want people to know that um, he's not a bad guy. He, he made he's a mistake. He's a very likable person. He made a mistake, you know, a long time ago, a nonviolent crime. He paid his dues. He did jail time for it. Everything was taken care of. He hasn't gotten in any trouble since. It was a serious crime? It was, was um, drugs, it was marijuana. We hold prayer circles every day, every night. We're very religious. He says God is the only one that's going to get us through this. And it has always. Many families are suffering. I'm one of the fortunate ones, actually, because you have a job. Many men are losing their houses. You know, their families have to go on welfare. We were all Trump supporters. We all supported Trump. My father supported Trump, and, you know, he vowed to protect these people, and yet Christians. he sent, yeah, the Christians, and he's sending all these people back, and it's just true betrayal. I don't even want to vote again. You know, I'm really disappointed in the, in the president. Doesn't he have any feelings for people? I mean, if he cares about people, how could you do this? I'm American at heart, and I'll always be. I've been in this country for 35 years, and many men have been here longer. My husband asked one of the agents, when is this going to be over? And the agent said, when they send you back. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. That's just one family story, and we will continue to follow the DeWood story. Check myweek.org for updates. 